Foldable smartphones are generally very, very expensive. And with a high price, a high cost, you should reasonably expect some appropriately high hardware quality standards. And it appears today, according once again to Michelle Rahman, who I will post a link to their Patreon page down below where they continue to break some really, really interesting news. Google is apparently now issuing quality standards or requirements for future folding phones to meet before they can actually be released. This is pretty crazy news. Now, like I said, this comes from Michelle's Patreons. I'm not going to show you the Patreon page because you got to pay $3 a month to get access to this, but I'm going to kind of pick and choose some of the more interesting details from this post and bring it to you in this video. So first off, let's talk about why this is important. I think there are several really obvious reasons. Number one is that these devices are super expensive, so you should have these sorts of requirements in place to make sure that customers aren't getting really cheaply made pieces of hardware that might fail on them quicker than they ought to. There's also this perception that these foldable phones are fighting against because of some things I've talked about in the past. There's probably a little bit of bias in the way that people report uh, issues with these folding devices. And when I say bias, I don't mean that they're like, out to get them. What I mean is that if you have a folding phone and your screen breaks, especially if you're one of those people in that likely small percentage of people who had their folding phone screen break to no fault of your own, you are going to post about this online. You're going to talk about it. However, with normal slab phones, they break all the time as well. Nobody posts about them. Nobody talks about it. It's just accepted as a normal thing. Yes, folding phones break, and they probably do break at a higher rate than normal slab phones. But if you simply looked at the perception, you would assume that they break at like some crazy, you know, 500% more often than slab phones. And I don't know that that is actually the case. I don't know that it's not. Maybe it is. But my intuition tells me, and my own personal anecdotal experience, tells me that that's probably not the case. At any rate, there is this negative perception. So things like this, these hardware requirements for foldables, might do something to kind of push back against that. Hey, Google's actually requiring some rigorous testing be done on these devices before they are released. Now, there is another big reason too, and Michelle talks about this in this article. The prices of these foldables are beginning to come down pretty heavily. They reference the Techno Phantom V Fold, which sells for around $1,100. So as they begin to come down in price, we don't want the cheaper foldables influencing how people see the more premium ones or influencing how people see the whole kind of device segment. These cheaper ones are more fragile. They have issues. They have problems with their hinges, all these moving parts that need to be, you know, verified that they are in good shape. Okay, so the cheaper ones have problems. What does that mean for the more expensive ones? Will it put people off again? These hardware requirements make a lot of sense. So now let's talk about what these requirements are according to Michelle's sources. This advisory, as they put it, sent out to OEMs in late March. Here's what we have to have. One, they have to be able to survive 200,000 fold and unfold cycles without exhibiting any display or touchscreen issues. Moreover, if it has a torque hinge, which to my knowledge is something like this, where they can be set at any, you know, different angle, it doesn't just kind of flop open and flop close, it has to maintain 80% of the original torque after 200,000 fold unfold cycles. Assuming they're counting a fold unfold cycle as one, so this will be one, not one, two. I'm assuming that's what they mean. If you open and close your phone 50 times a day, 200,000, that's 4,000 days if you divide that by years. Of course, that's like 10 years of use. So 200,000 is a pretty good number to be hitting. Another really good one though, Google says OEMs must commit themselves to at least two operating system upgrades and three years of security updates. That's a good bare minimum standard. You're gonna spend, you know, $1,800 and maybe in the case of the OnePlus Open, maybe it's gonna be $1,500. Well, you wanna know that you're gonna at least get three years of updates, two OS updates is like the bare minimum that we should be getting. So this, this is another, 
good thing to be shooting for. We probably want more than this, but as a bare minimum, this is pretty good. Now, there are a couple of other nuggets here. Questions like how will Google verify the OEMs are actually hitting these marks that I'm going to leave in the Patreon article. You can go check that out again in the link down below to see that for yourself. Overall, this is very interesting though. This is not something that Google typically does, which should tell you how seriously they are taking this new product segment, the world of foldables. Yes, they've released their own. Yes, they are updating their apps to be compatible with foldables and with tablets. Yes, they are updating their Play Store policies to push tablet optimized apps up to the top of the search results. I could go on. Google is clearly taking foldables and tablets more indirectly, much more seriously now than they have in the past. Just another sort of drop in that bucket, making that point over and over. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.